<laughs> Welcome to Eastern Oregon Film Festival, cast, crew, creators of Freeland. Um, why don't we do a little round robin because we, we don't often have the whole four topper. Let's talk with uh, Lily, you start us off and just kind of introduce yourself and let's go around the room. Sure, um, I'm, I'm pretty close to chicken man's beak there, so just to be safe. <laughs> I'm Lily Gladstone. I'm an actress in the film. I play Mara. <laughs> Laura's laughing too hard to go next. Make Laura go next. Laura. Okay. Next. Okay. Hi, I'm Laura Heverton. I'm the producer of Freeland. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us in your festival. You know how much I love your festival. It's really incredible. The programming is always great. So truly, it's a huge honor to be here with you and Mr. Chickenhead. So thank you. Uh, I laughed You're so up. it was. Krisha. Um, I'm Krisha Fairchild and then I played uh, Debbie in the film. And uh, I love Oregon. I lived in Seattle a long time. And uh, to me, as long as you stay within 10 miles of the I-5 corridor in Oregon, you're safe. So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, you. yeah, I'm Frank Mosley, one of the other actors in the film. I play the role of Josh. Um, and I love Eastern Oregon Film Fest. Uh, in fact, you all played some of my shorts that I directed over the last couple of years on your virtual platform on Filmmaker Magazine. So I was always really thankful to be a part of that. So you all are the best. Thank you. That's, I mean, that's one of the cool things that, you know, we've done in the past and kind of this year with our own online everything, we just kind of, we're here now. So um, Thank you guys for being here very much. And uh, again, if you haven't seen Freeland yet in our, in our lineup, check it out. Um, but I just wanna kind of set, set it up and, and give you guys an opportunity to share with, with uh, the audiences, um, you know, kind of your backgrounds a little bit, how much you wanna share about yourselves artistically or professionally and, and how this team came about, made the movie and where you're going. So um, I want, I'm gonna pick somebody to go first. Like school. Laura, you tell me a little bit about, about how this all began. Yeah, no, I'm happy to. So Kate McLean and Mario Ferloni, um, who are the directors, uh, went to graduate school together at Berkeley and they did a fantastic short called Pop Country, um, which world premiered at, at Mill Valley, um, about, about this, this world. It was about what, what was happening with, with legalization was coming and it was really focusing on uh, Two, two particular people who, who lived there, but one of them was this sort of uh, hippie weed farmer. Um, and they were really kind of enamored with her and her whole story and the story of everything that was going on up there. They spent a lot of time going up there. Um, and although they, they were you know, trained documentary filmmakers and they're extremely good at that, uh, they were really interested in making a fiction film uh, based on these you know, kind of people um, and, and really that's how they started working on the script. I met them at um, IFP Film Week in New York, if people know what that is. It's a big uh, uh, sort of conference meeting that, uh, that happens in September. Um, I met them years ago. We worked on the script for a while, but because we were going to shoot it during the real harvest, every year we had this extremely limited window in which to shoot it. So it took a few years. And as that happened, the beauty of it was that all these other people like Krisha and Lily and Frank all were gathered and pulled into the project, so. Great. Lily, you're smiling too big. What's your story? <laughs> Put your mask on then. <laughs> oh, right, before I start sp spreading everywhere. Um, <laughs> I like these filters too much, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, time to be serious. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I came into this film through uh, really mutual connections that you see on the screen here. Um, we're, all, we're all festival people. I was uh, at, so there's, I've, I met both Frank and Cresha at two different film festivals. Cresha we met when I was working as a programmer at Montana Film Festival. And I was coordinating an educational sort of breakout because Montana's um, to incentivize more films being made there. One of the 
things that we need to have is a trained and ready crew. So we were doing little production intensives to kind of get people interested in the process of going to work on a film set. And Krisha graciously volunteered an hour of her, of her day to have lunch with everybody hmm. and to just talk shop about what it is being an actor on set, what her journey was. Everybody fell in love with her. We connected and liked each other really quickly. And then by the end of the festival, maybe I said it, maybe somebody else said it. Somehow Krisha learned I was an actor and I had a film that was kind of in the wings ready to come out later that year. And she was like, we're going to work together. It'll manifest. We'll do something. So of course, because she's magic, she manifested it. And I get this, uh, yeah. And I feel like when we connected about it the first time, we t even talked about the sort of dynamic that we were interested in finding with each other. Kind of um, this, uh, this mentor parent sort of, uh, but then there being a little bit of a tension point between between the two of them. Um, yeah, so Krisha reached out to me on Twitter uh, not long after Frank reached out to me on Twitter. We met at also a Montana film office party at Sundance. Um, so yeah, we've all met in various Montana film like festival circuits. And uh, yeah, I loved, well, Krisha is a person, the film Krisha. Um, really interested in exploring this kind of content um the uh you know, exploration of <clears throat> the modern western um another tale of gentrification um yeah and incredibly topical interesting historically right now so Absolutely. yeah it was pretty it was pretty easy uh both of these actors reached out to me on the same platform and then we were on set together uh like three four weeks later for me I was, I think, probably one of the last people attached. Cool. Frank, what you got? Hey, uh, so similar to uh, Lily, actually, I, I got an email from Laura, and apparently I, my name had floated around because of Laura and because of Cretia. Um, and Laura had co-produced a film called Americana a few years before that I was involved with and that's how I think we started talking more about p potentially working on something together uh, after meeting at each other in uh, I think the Berlin Alley. In like we, met, we met in Berlin when you yeah. were there as a Berlin LA talent. That's right as part of the Berlin LA talent campus and that was it was a blast and then Krisha was uh, just someone I'd, I'd always wanted to work with after seeing the film Krisha um, so we had started becoming Facebook friends and kind of sending messages back and forth much like Lily and Krish did like you know something's gonna happen we gotta collaborate on something uh what it is I don't know and so then when I got that email from Laura and the note from Krisha I was just immediately on board and also just like the subject matter as Lily said was so provocative and intriguing and it seemed from like what the filmmakers were after because I didn't know them at the time Mario or Kate but also knowing that they, they seem to be very collaborative and they talked about kind of growing these characters together as a team and all being kind of like a family. And so that was like really appealing. Um, and so around the time I was signing on is when Lily was signing on as well. And so then I was like, well, this just can't get any better because I was a big fan of Lily's as well and had wanted to work with her just like Krisha and I had talked. So it just seemed like the perfect time to do this perfect project. It all came together. Yeah, it really did. Because we had, because we had a script meant really, we didn't have. There was not a full script, and the right. idea was again. I mean, I do think Mario and Kate. You know, I, I think one of the great gifts they brought to the filmmaking was their ability to listen and collaborate. Um, right. As as the as the film developed. I was going to ask on that notion how, and you, you you talked about it, Frank. Kind of the goal was to kind of build these relationships and, and really, you know, so how much time in terms of rehearsal or maybe time you spent together to kind of nurture that bond before you began shooting or was that kind of, did it evolve as you were shooting and, and just spending that intense time together? No, I'll use that yeah. one as, yeah. I, uh, because okay. it was absolutely true that we, I mean, basically for me, I'm kind of a bit of a yenta and I, and I had retired when, when Trey asked me to do Cretia. I never expected to ever be out in this world. These two actors are decades younger than I am and they had been, you know, Sundance and Berlin and places like that that I'd never been in my life. And um, 
when it all kicked up for me, the next script that I got that was of interest to me was, was this one. And um, as they were working on it and making it be ready for, it was like preheating an oven, you know? And, and um, it, it, the story kept evolving. And when I finally saw the scriptment, I'm reading it and I'm just going like, okay, so if I could, if I could help them find actors that I would want to live this life with this be a family with we lived um, well I had my own cabin because I'm kind of OCD about having to have time for lines and things like that but it was attached to this big house where everybody stayed together we had all our meals together we in the morning the directors made coffee we didn't have any formal rehearsal except what happened during all that time when we were sitting around as a family and in, in, interacting and a ton of email communication um, that happened between all of us setting up backstory. I know John Craven, the guy who played Ray, he and I just immediately went into like, okay, what's our shared history? We decided that some things we would decide on and other things we would fill in the blanks ourselves. These guys were both doing the same thing. Who am I? Why am I there? Blah, blah, blah. And um, it, 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 when it was ready, it, it happened and it happened that the magic was able to be there for us. And uh, so. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, it's an ongoing theme this, uh, this year at the conversations we're having about just the power of these creative teams and, you know, really being able to leverage a group of talents that, you know, that sync up really well to, to push forward one of these projects all the way through and, and that you know we're, we're becoming ever so reliant on those, you know, those creative relationships be, to tell our stories or help us tell stories. So, I appreciate that. Um, again, if there's anybody listening in the ethers in live time, type up a question and we'll keep an eye on that. Um, real quickly, I want to uh, uh, I want to touch on this a little bit for us and and just from your experience with other festivals. You know, you've you've shown it a few places under the current situation. Um, you know, how is how's your experience been getting this film out? Like, really sharing it and connecting with people, um, or has it already done that and we're kind of at the tail end of that? Or where are you at with that? Well, we've been in almost fifty festivals, by the way. There we go. I knew we were. At, <laughs> we, I mean, I've seen all the laurels. I've seen yeah. all the laurels adding up. So I wasn't entirely <laughs> sure. I, I wasn't sure your timeline. So. You know, it seems like you were running pretty strong and then COVID, you know, kind of collapsed the presentation model a little bit. Uh, so can you speak to maybe that and where, where did that momentum take you or, or lead you to this on this? Well, well, you know, we were going to premiere at South By and then we didn't. And then we were really in freeze mode like a lot of people were. I mean, there were festivals that we were in um, in April that did switch right to virtual. Um, Cleveland, for instance, did that and Vail and a few other places. Um, and then uh, other festivals we were in then we we're trying to figure out what they were doing. And we just didn't know, like we couldn't figure out what to do. Our sales agents at ICM couldn't quite figure out uh, what to do. No one knew what was going on. I mean, because not only was it, that, this happening with the film, but everybody was just frozen in real life and terrified and in quarantine, you know, with a lot of bigger things going on besides our little movie. Um, and so, but it really, uh, you know, as sort of a couple of months went on and more and more of the festivals were adapting and trying to do this virtual uh, thing, um, it just felt like the story is so great and so beautiful. And I felt that really, really strongly that we needed to get it out there and share it with people. And I wanted to do that for everybody who worked on the film. Um, and, but I also wanted to support all these festivals. I mean, I, mean, I say this all the time, I'll say it again. You all are so important to us, to the lives, the lives of our films, um, of supporting new work, new talent. I mean, from from the from the directors to the actors to the composers, everyone, and you know we're this lovely, beautiful microcosm. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I wanted to support all all of you, you know, like scrambling and being brave and trying to figure something out too. So you know, we're all very connected together. Um, and it's been great. I mean, you know, I mean, we haven't been able to go, like people met at film festivals. I met so many people at film festivals. I live in Pittsburgh. I work very kind of solo here. 
Um, I was desperate to go to South by and finally see people. Um, um, but you know, it's, uh, it's been really wonderful. We've been able to travel and have all do these Q and A's and really share the film with a lot of people. And I think it's been working out really well for the festivals, you know, just, you know, keeping things going, keeping it, the work going for their communities. So. Well, let um, me, I, we just got a question pop in. So let me, it, it actually uh, resonates with what you just talked about, but let's talk to Frank and Lily about a little bit in terms of your career and stuff. Uh, so how has the, you know, the current situation uh, impacted your, your ability to network through these film festivals? Like really what is, are there new hurdles now with meeting the people you need to meet to propel projects? Is it, or has it, you know, how have you adapted to that? What's your strategy? Um, you know, in a funny way, something about it, everybody knowing that they're behind a computer and they have this access, there are way more people reaching out to me now <laughs> mm. than there have been before. Um, because like, we're all home, we're all looking for stuff to do. And the exciting stuff that, um, you know, I mean, there's always like a bit of that going on, um, like people having projects and whatnot wanting to kind of talk to you about them um but what I've really enjoyed is how like that you know back on theme your core group of creatives that you you meet by doing stuff like this everybody's like hey let's develop something together so um yeah it's been it's been cool like seeing people's ideas come in it's been cool forming a lot of these new connections for the you know when it's safe again sort of scenarios um other than that, personally, like I did three auditions this week because it's a busy time of the year. So like that, that aspect of this work hasn't. Are those all, slow. if you don't mind, are those all online things now or do you still go, you know, get on a it's stage or in a safe space, you know? Yeah, it's self-taping. Um, that's kind of primarily how people like to see you anymore. Like there's a lot of times where you are called into the room so you can meet and do face to face. But um, yeah, it's primarily the last few years, it's felt like the majority. And I think you guys probably experienced this too. It's put yourself on tape for this. So it's just, you know, your iPhone in a well-lit room and, and then you go. You throw your, your name into the hat. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Frank, what about you? Has this impacted your ability or heightened your ability? Um, I don't know. Um... Honestly, I think the one thing I've been happy about is just the film getting seen. And so it's just nice to have that exposure to where like, you know, if you miss the film the first time, there's another chance to see it, another chance to see it. So like in terms of friends and family and any other potential collaborators that you know through social media, it's like you can talk about something that's still alive just as it would be in person on the actual physical fest circuit, but it, in some ways it's even better because it's because of the streaming, you can see it anywhere, yeah. um, which is really beautiful. But I wouldn't say, I think I haven't really talked to, I don't think it's necessarily like helped me connect though with a lot more people uh, right now for me personally. I think it's, um, it, it's certainly been great for exposure, but I think for me, it's been more just kind of about uh, connecting with, uh, other films that I want to see uh, it's given me such a platform to research and find new films that I know that you know will normally play at a fest that I can't make so it's just cool to be able to look up those films and check it out at home you know I already got some lined up like for every festival we stream at I'm like oh here's a film I want to see and check out you know for, for me I, I unusually because I'm not a person that gets a lot of offers but I had a big project that would have shot in Europe that um Ha was ha just when COVID thing happened, um, they they decided, I mean, I was my name was on the table for something I would have loved to have done. They decided to cast in England because they had to take the actors, you know, to Europe and it was that much easier. And then just this week, you guys don't even know this, I had to turn down a part in a horror film that was a role that I could have played the pants off of. And I read the script and I really was like, Ah, and they wanted me next week for two weeks in Connecticut. And I live in central Mexico. And I got on the computer with 
you know, and I'm, I'm overweight and I'm old and I'm very careful. I'm in isolation since March. I got on the computer and looked at how many flights I'd have to take and their budget was not, it wouldn't have been a family style. You know, I mean, all the things that are magical to me about this film and Cresha would have been off the table there. And yet I would have been breathing on people and hugging people and, and in everybody's face. And I just, I had, it was so hard to do, but I just had to, I had to say, there'll be other parts. It just, it's not time yet. Not Connecticut, <laughs> not Absolutely. even. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure, I'm sure that's hard right now. And, you know, as you're, you know, kind of navigating your professional career under this, but then also at the same time trying to satiate the creativity in that part of you that needs to connect creatively with other people. And, and so I think we're all learning and kind of creating, you know, new approaches to that. So uh, this is one of those. Yay, we're at the movies. <laughs> Okay, so, well, there was one more question, but Krisha, you kind of uh, spoke to it earlier in the feed about kind of how you got involved. So I'll, I'll let it, uh, I'll let that unfurl once they watch back or listen to the stream. Um, but I did want to thank you all for jumping in today. Yes, thank you, Lily. Um, I hope some of you got, I didn't know who all to send packages to for our artist stuff at the time. So I don't know if any of you are going to get, I hope you get something from our little uh, craft master. You should have some recipe cards and hatchets to throw at each other. Things like that. Nice. Great. Uh, <laughs> Always but, love a hatchet. Mm -hmm. Always. Just Thank loving you. the little glasses. Uh, <laughs> thanks everybody again. Thank and. You. Uh, Again, yeah, leave your, leave your questions in the chat throughout the weekend on Freeland and we can uh, try to revisit those, so. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, appreciate it, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your movie watching. Enjoy thank your movie. It was a pleasure, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Be safe.